Hey, it's Mr. Bebe, and today's lesson is on the cell membrane. So let's get into our first key concept here. The cell membrane is a barrier that separates the cell from the external environment. So let's look at the structure here. You see this picture right here? Sometimes scientists refer to this cell membrane as the plasma membrane, a phospholipid bilayer, or the fluid mosaic model. But what I want you guys to know is that all of those mean the exact same thing. So if you hear me say plasma membrane, it's the cell membrane. If I refer to the fluid mosaic model, it's the cell membrane. All right, so don't confuse those. So first let's talk about the structure. So we know that phospholipids or lipids uh, make up the main portion. There's a bilayer of them. You see the head, the glycerol head, is on the outside and facing inside, and then the fatty acid tail is what's facing inward. Also, the membrane also has uh, proteins, carbohydrates, and cholesterols, as you can see here. The uh, proteins are usually integrated into the entire membrane. Carbohydrates are usually sticking out uh, towards the outside of the cell. And then cholesterol is kind of within those fatty acid chains uh, within the bilayer of the actual cell membrane. So let's talk a little bit more about structure here. Here's another little picture that you can kind of see it in a different way. Um, so those phospholipids are made of phosphate, glycerol, and fatty acid. The glycerol and fatty acid part you should recognize from lipids. Uh, the phosphate heads, the, uh, the, the ones that are on the outside and looking on the inside of the cell, are hydrophilic, meaning they like water. Okay, and the fatty acid tail, the part that's facing inside, is hydrophobic. That means it doesn't like water at all. So if we look at this a little closer, we can tell. You see the green circle there is the glycerol head, and that is what we would call polar. Polar meaning it's got positive and negative ends. Uh, now water is also polar, so it's going to like to interact with other polar molecules. The nonpolar portion is that fatty acid chain, which is the blue portion here. That does not like water because it's nonpolar. So nonpolar and polar do not mix. So that's why you've got the head facing the water and the tail facing away from the water. So carbohydrates, proteins, and cholesterol are all embedded in that membrane, just like we said before. Uh, carbohydrates are usually uh, what we would call ID tags or identification tags. They identify uh, portions of the membrane that may be important for other molecules that are coming by. Uh, trying to get through the membrane. Uh, the proteins actually help materials cross over the membrane and cholesterol helps provide a little bit of structural support for that membrane. So that's the function of those three things. So what does the membrane actually do? Well, it controls the passage of all material in and out of the cell and it actually helps provide a barrier between the cell and its environment, so help protect it a little bit. So, but the cell membrane is what actually makes sure that the stuff that is supposed to cross over, crosses over. And the cell membrane is actually what we would call selectively permeable or semi-permeable. That's the same thing. So some molecules can cross, some cannot. So that just depends on what kind of molecule you are and if you have a charge on you or if you're too big or too small. So you can see in that picture on the bottom right there. So another thing we want to look at is all the different types of substances that can move across the cell membrane. We've got things like oxygen, carbon dioxide, glucose, uh, various different ions like potassium, sodium, of course water, and even some enzymes. Now the reason things move across a cell membrane is to make sure that the uh, inside and outside of the cell is maintained at some sort of equilibrium or whatever um, the concentrations are supposed to be. So it's all about homeostasis. That's the reason it is selectively permeable. It helps it maintain uh, those internal conditions without upsetting the cell too much. So as you can see that cartoon there, the cell membrane is what regulates whether that nutrient is going to get past or not. Now, how do these particles move? They move according to a concentration gradient. That just means that if there is a higher concentration of substances outside the cell than there is inside, then the particles are going to want to move from the outside to the inside. If the uh, concentrations are equal inside and outside, there is no concentration gradient, meaning particles are fine. They don't need to move in or out. And if uh, the concentration of particles on the inside of the cell is greater than on the outside, those particles are going to want to move out to make sure we maintain some sort of equilibrium. So 
Again, the main point here, molecules are going to move to maintain equilibrium. And that's what we call dynamic equilibrium because it is always changing. So the molecules are going to continue to move back and forth, back and forth uh, in a dynamic way, meaning ever-changing, to make sure that equilibrium is achieved.